All right, welcome back. Let's continue the discussion now. I'm now being joined on the program by Achike Chude, who is a political affairs analyst. Achike, thank you very much yeah, for pleasure. coming on the program. Uh, t tell me, uh, because I'm, I'm actually trying to make sense of this, how you go from being a resident electoral commissioner in to being a governorship aspirant in, in just a space of 24 hours. How do you explain that? Of course, it's not against the law. It's not against the rule book. But then it says a lot about that individual, that while that individual was the resident electoral commissioner, he probably was partisan, sort of. Well, well, I, I don't know whether he was exactly partisan, no, but, but what is clear, what is clear is that uh, he, has, uh, he had partisan loyalties, partisan views. No. I mean, because, you see, look, the process of, of, of even living as a, res, you know, a rec and, uh, you know, becoming a candidate for a governorship, uh, ele in a governorship election, on the platform of a political party means that um, it's not a journey that started overnight. Overnight? I know. No, you have to have been consulting with people. You have to have been discussing with people. Well, according to him, he said, yes. you know, his people came to him and said he should run, that he should come and run for, for the office. No, but well, well, I mean, even if it, the people came <laughs> and told him to run in for office. Uh, in, in, in July. And then in August. The process has started. And, 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 and that process implied that he had to have some kind of contact or connection with a political party or some political parties. parties. And while so he, he would have while he was still holding the position of REC. So he had partisan views, obviously. He had sympathies for a political party because it was on the basis, it was on the platform of that political party that he hoped to, you know, fulfill his political ambition. ambition. And, and, and that in itself is exceedingly very, very awkward. And it's not something that should just go unanswered. I mean, if you look at it from that uh, perspective. perspective. You know, and then again, uh, perhaps again, even beyond that, and of course, a critical issue, even beyond that is the fact that, um, that uh, perhaps there's something else that he knows that we don't know. He understands the structure of, you know, elections and the processes of election. And perhaps he must have given, because if his people came to him and asked him to do this, and on the basis of that, he lost a very good position when he resigned as REC, because, I mean, uh, I mean it is very clear that it's, it's a privileged position. position. There are not so many Nigerians uh, that, that, that get to that position of REC. There are certain privileges attached to that. So he must have calculated the cost of leaving that position, looking at what he was going to get, hopefully better than where he's living. And, and, and so uh, he would have looked at it. And then uh, I, 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 he must have had an idea that that move itself would fetch him something even if for instance i understand that he has been uh, his uh, his uh, nomination or so has been re yeah he was, uh, he was actually uh, disqualified he that, was disqualified that he had not been in the party for a very long uh, time uh, yeah yeah but beyond that again is the fact that perhaps he was aiming for something higher he must also have understood the running of the political party and the fact that the already people in the, the field before him i must have had people, people who had become entrenched within the political process so for him I to must have, have been taken, speaking oh, with those oh, people oh, while he was wreck. Definitely. So for him to have, you know, taken this leap, he must have taken it conscious of the fact that the benefits will come, if not now, but in due course. And that is the worrisome aspect of it. And the question you now want to ask yourself on the basis of this really is, are there other people like him? The, 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 the show, the hierarchy the show of, of INEC. Of INEC. And it, it's a cause for worry. And uh, so it means uh, there the, the probably is a need for us to begin to take a closer look at some of these resident electoral commissioners. Because the uh, fact is, you just can't completely, confidently say that on the basis of what has happened now, mm -hmm. That some of these resident electoral commissioners are not partisan. No, you see, the thing is this: uh, the, the reality, you know, of partisanship is that um, and people must have their views, uh, and so you, sometimes you cannot prevent that. That's the reality. But again, no, it, but it is a that for them. Position, that's that's where I'm going. We know what yes. the rule says. Yes, uh, that's where I'm going. It, yeah, exactly. To work in INEC and exactly. All of that. It is incubated upon them that whatever biases you have, whatever partisanship you have, is not something that must be displayed in the discharge of your responsibility because it is such a very sensitive position where your supposed objectivity is supposed to be the kernel of 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 the duties and obligations that you have within INEC. So when you show your hand in this manner, it becomes a cause for worry. Oh, yeah. And and very clearly too, I mean the point has to be made. Uh, th there's nothing wrong. But the fact is you look at the circumstance within a space of twenty four hours, then 
if for instance he had waited for say maybe a year or so and you can understand you know that there must have been some intervening factors between when he left yes. the office uh, like in the case of Jaga we understand mm -hmm. he's now a member of PRP Jaga left office um, yes. some some years yes. ago yes. that is understandable but to leave within 24 hours Come on, that's and immediately, immediately, within 24 hours, you, you become partisan. You, part you, jo you, you, you join the no, governorship no, race. No, believe me, it's, it's not something that can be waved away just like that. It's a, it's a cause for concern. And like I have said, even if these people came to meet him in uh, July, this is August. Uh, the reality is that um, he, he has said been twenty first of twenty first of July. They came to him. Eight of August, he was out of Idec. That, that's about uh, maybe four five. Eight of August he was out of uh, INEC. Uh, about, about, about four, about four, five, of August. about four five weeks, and then he had pitched his <laughs> Less tent. Than four, five he weeks. had pitched his tent with a political party. Uh, the process, like I said, started while he was in office. Look, that is just the reality. He just don't. He just didn't leave, uh, you know, as a wreck. And they're waiting to it for us. He made all of the calculations, all of the permutations, uh, you know, and all of the you know processes and connections and contacts that he needed in order to, for him to run on the platform of a political party. All of this thing had been ongoing, and he was a wreck while these things were happening, you know, uh, uh, underneath. Could, could that be the reason? Because, of, uh, uh, you know, he's, he resigned, but INEC later said no, that they didn't receive uh, his resignation letter, that he, he was actually asked to leave and all of that, that that could be INEC doing some damage control, because no doubt his action would definitely cast a, a dark shadow over the independence of INEC. It, 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 it will. Um, again, uh, that kind of situation. I like because I INEC now is trying to give yeah. the impression that yeah. he sacked him. And yeah, not yeah. I, and, and this, is, this is the reality. So you now have you know, a, a contradictory, you have, you have contradictory statements from him and then from INEC on the other side. The reality is that uh, there is that possibility that INEC is trying to do some damage control because uh, and that's why we're even discussing this because it is something that has raised some, you know, uh, 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 some mixed signals. Uh, 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 for us to be talking about it, is, I mean, also implies or could imply that other people are perhaps looking at it and saying, "Look, no, something is wrong here." And so, uh, it, it, obviously, we have not heard, we didn't hear that INEC had, INEC had a problem with him or that he had a problem with INEC. So, uh, what is what INEC is doing is just aching to. Uh, a man closing the ban after the horse has voted. Uh, the damage has already been done. INEC is coming to do some damage control. But people are not exactly going to be convinced by INEC's position. If INEC had come out before now, uh, then perhaps people would say, oh yeah, yeah, okay, this is the consequence of INEC you know, asking this man to leave. Uh, but now that the man has left and has done something that uh, may, will make people begin to question exactly what is going on within the structure of INEC, then INEC is now coming uh, to uh, uh, do some damage control. Uh, it is what, what do you, just imagine, even though he didn't get, eventually he didn't get the ticket of uh, the APC, the governorship ticket, but just imagine he got the ticket of the APC and he was going to be a candidate in that election. Don't you think that would have thrown up a lot of dust where you would have just an immediate past resident electoral commissioner coming to contest a governorship election it would definitely throw up a lot of dust because the opposition party would begin to suspect that this individual who was wrecked for a number of years would definitely have his people within INEC and that INEC, that there would be no guarantee for INEC now to conduct anything free and fair. I mean, independent election. And you might not blame them, seriously. Oh, no, of course uh, you wouldn't no, blame no, them. You, no, no, you cannot because uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I mean, a lot of these wrecks have been meeting. A lot of them are colleagues. A lot of them could be friends. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, and... Uh, they have done a lot of things together, and so if he harbors this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, partisan uh, intentions, and then he now succeeds in scaling the hurdles and becomes a governorship candidate, he is going to be contesting in a state where you are, you know, in a state where they also have a wreck in charge, who is probably his friend, friend, who probably could show some sympathies to him. You know, at that particular point in time, you cannot exactly rule some uh, level of subjectivity over the conduct of that particular election. election, yes. So, good a thing <laughs> he didn't even get the ticket in the first. <laughs> yeah, but, but then again... But then, again, the, the again, damage well, is there. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we can't yeah, deny that. It's, yeah, yeah, it's we, actually an embarrassment. And, and we, have, we, have, we also have a duty to now begin to look, in, you know, to Closely. scrutinize these people in detail and then try to see uh, if they are those who are exactly what uh, they are not in terms of uh, having a sympathy for political parties. parties. And it's not as if we've had this. I mean, as a matter of uh, 
a national discourse uh, for, uh, for some time where you have an opposition party accusing some INEC commissioners uh, of, of being yeah. sympathetic to the ruling government, to the government of the day. And, and, and so, and that has caused a lot of uh, fear. Yes. We, have, we remember, uh, I think, uh, the PDP making such accusations against, uh, I think, the INEC National Commissioner. Uh, that was, was she in charge of logistics for INEC yeah, at exactly. the time? And people felt, I uh, know, exactly. that she was deliberately put there for a purpose because she is also close mm. to certain people within the hierarchy of the ruling party. Okay. So you don't want that kind of uh, a thing because people will become very suspicious. And so ultimately at the end of the day, especially when the election becomes contentious and it undermines the credibility. The people the begin to say, look, this is exactly what we suspected. This is what we feared was going to happen. So you don't want it to get to that level before people begin uh, to look for ways to seek for redress. Achikachuri, thank you very much for coming on the program. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll come back to discuss something completely different. On Deji 360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. Why we never shared, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, panel today. DG 360. Providing clarity to issues.